Hello everyone. In this presentation, we will uh, see how a 4-bit dynamic shift register works. We are already familiar with the inverting type as well as non-inverting type of uh, dynamic shift register wherein we have considered one single bit. Now, if I consider uh, multiple number of bit here, I have uh, used the design in terms of a 4-bit uh, dynamic shift register which is going to perform a right shift operation. So depending upon the clock cycle 51 and 52 and the loading uh, sequence, it is going to perform the right shift operation bitwise. So let us discuss whether uh, it is in the form of an inverting type or a non-inverting type of dynamic shift register. So if you look into the first diagram, so I have uh, represented using a transistor as well as a NOT gate. Along with that, I have used a polysilicon as well as a diffusion layer along with the NOT gate. So the first diagram that is uh, in yellow colored one, the transistor and NOT gate represents the circuit diagram for a 4-bit serial right shift register in terms of an NMOS logic or NMOS pass transistor usage. Whereas, if you see this particular second diagram, it is a combination of both stick as well as the circuit or uh, the logic diagram, uh, the NOT gate in terms of uh, logic representation, whereas uh, the uh, transistor, I have represented it by using a layer that is in terms of stick diagram, polysilicon crossing a N type of diffusion. So it is a 4-bit serial shift register. Uh, so if you see a transistor cascaded with the inverter, another transistor cascaded with an inverter. So this comprises one single bit. So I have to use this four times in order to make sure that I am designing it for a four bit serial right shift register. So if I am having two inverters and uh, two NMOS uh, transistors present, then I have already discussed it in terms of a non-inverting dynamic shift register. Uh, so here what happens is I am considering the 51.LD signal. So if I am asserting this particular 51.LD signal as equal to logical one state. So if this is asserted with the value of logical one state, the transistor is turned on. This particular transistor is turned on, first transistor. Suppose if I am uh, having a value of logical one at the input of 51.LD transistor, since this transistor is on, it will be behaving like a closed switch and the entire one is going to appear at the output of the first transistor. One is applied as an input to the inverter 1. So the output obtained from inverter 1 will be logical 0 state. If I am asserting a phi 2 signal as equal to logical 1 state, then the transistor will get turned on. It is going to behave like a closed switch. So this is going to behave like a closed switch and the output it is going to yield the value of logical 0 state. Now the logical 0 state is behaving as an input for the inverter 2. So the output obtained from the inverter 2 will be logical 1 state. So I had applied the input as equal to 1 and I have obtained the output also as equal to 1 which means that this is following the concept of non-inverting type of dynamic storage element. So now uh, 1 has appeared over here. So this completes uh, 1 uh, clock cycle of 51 and 1 clock cycle of 52. Next clock cycle of 51, uh, I will be having the passage of the input as logical 0 state. So previously it was 1, right? So the output out of uh, inverter 1, if I am assumed that there is a capacitor presented, the output of inverter 1, say CG1. Uh, so if I am having a capacitor over here, that is like CG1. So this is designated as CG1 capacitor. Similarly, at the output of the inverter 2, if I am having the capacitor, say that is CG2. Right. So CG1 will be having now due to the previous operation performed this was equal to logical 0 state. So the charge stored in the capacitor CG1 is 0 and the output from the inverter 2 was equal to 1. So the charge stored in capacitor CG2 is 1. Once you complete the phi 2 cycle at the next clock cycle of phi 1. So here if you see this is applied the bit 2 I am finding it as clock signal phi 1. So when I am applying the clock signal phi 1 once again if I am loading the value as equal to logical 0 state. So whatever the values are present previously. So previously your uh, bit stored in terms of inverter 1 was 0 and inverter uh, 
2 was equal to logical 1 state. It will get shifted to inverter 3 output and inverter 4 output. So, 0 and 1 will appear at the 0 and 1 output will appear at the output across the inverter 3 as well as inverter 4 or it will be shifted towards the charge stored in the capacitor CG3 and CG4. So, now if I want to perform once again the operation depending upon the signal what I have loaded that is equal to logical 0 state. So, now I am applying it as equal to logical 0. So, logical 0 next clock signal phi 1 is applied. So, here it is a closed switch of a phi 1 dot LD output from inverter 1 will be 1. If I am asserting the phi 2 clock signal as 1 this transistor will be turned on behaves like a closed switch. So, here the output appears as equal to logical 1 state and the output of inverter 2 will be equal to 0 state. So, now the output stored in the capacitor CG1 is equal to logical 1 state and the output stored from the inverter 2 that is capacitor CG2 is equal to logical 0 state. So, once again when it is going to perform the shift operation this 3 and 4 output whatever it is visible as 0 and 1 will be shifted towards 5 and 6. This 1 and 2 will be now shifted towards 3 and 4. Next freshly I am going to add the next bit value that is equal to logic 0 or logic 1 and I am going to apply the 5 1 signal. So, at each and every individual cycle each and every individual bit which is stored in the inverter output it will get shifted 1 by 1 towards the right terminal. So, at the end I will be getting the output from the inverter 2, then inverter 4, inverter 6 as well as inverter 8. So, whatever the first value I have stored, the first value stored was equal to logical 1 state, right? So, it will appear towards the inverter 8 output. Next time it is showing me the value as 0. So, that 0 will appear over here. Similarly, if I start loading, I will be obtaining the outputs through the terminals of inverter 2 as well as inverter 4 output. So, this is how we can get the parallel outputs from each and every individual terminals. So, from the terminals of 2, 4, 6 and 8, I can consider it as a parallel output. If I want the serial output, then I can take the output directly from the terminal 8, that is output of the inverter 8. Then, if I assert the phi 1 dot RD, that is uh, your uh, read signal, that is phi 1 dot RD signal, if I assert it as equal to logical 1 or uh, high state, further clock se sequences will be received. So, this is how you are going to design a 4-bit serial right shift register in terms of NMOS pass transistor logic. If I want to design it by making use of a transmission gate, then it is nothing but the second diagram. How to draw this stick diagram? I have already explained you in my uh, previous 1-bit uh, dynamic register element uh, design wherein your uh, vertical uh, that is the gate terminal will be represented in terms of a vertical layer of polysilicon. Transistor has to be formed means it has to cross a uh, n type of diffusion then an inverter. Complete stick diagram if I want I have to replace this inverter 1 by making use of an NMOS inverter stick diagram. So, cascade it with NMOS uh, inverter stick diagram. So, refer uh, to the stick diagram concept in uh, module 2 wherein you have designed an NMOS inverter stick diagram. So, this is how you are going to use the concept of 4-bit serial shift uh, that is right shift register in terms of NMOS pass transistor logic. So, the second diagram what you are going to see in terms of circuit that is a transmission gate as well as the NOT gate. So, this is the design of a 4-bit serial right shift register or a dynamic shift register by making use of a transmission gate. So, as you already know now, transmission gate is nothing but it will be a parallel combination of a P MOSFET as well as a N MOSFET. So, how to draw the stick diagram of this we have seen in the previous presentation. So, parallel combination wherein polysilicon, polysilicon you are going to consider one in the form of complemented signal, another one in the form of the normal signal. So, down portion it is N MOSFET here. So, it is phi 1 dot LD. Top portion it is a, a P MOSFET which should be designated as uh, this should be designated as phi 1 dot LD complement. So, this particular terminal in case of um, transmission gate it has to be registered as phi 1 dot LD the whole complement. So, similarly if you draw the stick diagram for that working operation will remain same as that in the case of your uh, 
in mos transistor logic and here you are uh, having one uh, transmission gate so with the then designation as 51.ld complement and 51.ld cascade it with an inverter then you have to go on cascading it with the transmission gate so all these designs will repeat once again so complement uh, and non complement signal so you have phi2 complement for p mosfet and phi2 for your n mosfet similarly phi1 complement for p mosfet so that's why you can see crossing of diffusion layer occurs in the top portion for complement form crossing of diffusion layer occurs in the bottom part of the uh, that is representation of uh, n mos transistor in the pull down part so individually uh, also you can represent it in this manner or else you can join all these uh, phi2 complement signal extend this a bit extend this a bit and all the phi2 complement signals you can connect them together like this so this is also phi2 so from here another uh, phi2 from here another one phi2 complement signal so like this you can have a combination similarly for uh, phi1 also this is your uh, phi1 phi1 complement signal right so from here again i am having this as a phi1 complement so from here again i am having one more uh, uh, phi1 complement so make sure that you are not using metal layer for both one should be a polysilicon another one should be a metal layer so here you can see if uh, there is a crossing of a diffusion uh, sorry metal layer and metal layer it is against the violation of lambda based design rules similarly i can um, cascade or i can make a common connection for all the phi2 signals like this so this is one phi2 again join it with one more uh, phi2 signal again i am having one more uh, phi2 signal so all these phi2 signals can be joined together similarly i can join all the phi1 signals together like this so this is one phi1 signal this is another phi1 signal so till here i have drawn you can continue with the one more of this kind excluding an inverter towards the inverter 8 output terminal and designate it as uh, phi1 rd complement as well as phi1 rd this one i have missed in this particular diagram so you can use one more cascade connection of uh, this particular format that is uh, phi1 dot uh, ld as well as phi1 dot ld complement so again copy paste this same thing over the output terminal of inverter 8 and mark it as phi1 dot rd whole complement and phi1 dot rd so this is going to perform the operation of 4 bit serial right shift type of register hope you understood the concept so what is uh, the type of uh, shift register element we are using it is nothing but a non inverting type of uh, shift register and uh, in that we are using two distinct type of uh, circuits or the design one by making use of uh, nmos fast transistor and another one by making use of a transmission gate so hope you understood this concept thank you for listening